With Kirk Cousins leading the Red Hot Vikings to town this Sunday, we break down his much anticipated return to DC, as well as the other top matchups we expect to see play out on the field. Plus, Washington has been spreading the wealth on offense, and one of the guys benefiting is wide receiver Curtis Samuel. He joins London Fletcher to discuss Washington's winning streak. And with Minnesota riding a winning streak of their own, we share our keys for Washington to earn the victory in front of all the home fans at FedEx Field on Sunday. Welcome on into Command Center. Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss. This Sunday, Washington is looking for four wins in a row, and it would certainly be nice to do it at home and in front of all of our military. It is Military Appreciation Game. Uh, we will have so many service members that represent our country uh, out at the game looking forward to that. And, of course, the team will be wearing the all-black uniforms. Mm. There you go. Mm. I mean, I like the all-blacks. They look good against Dallas. It'll be nice to see them in the daytime, though, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I loved it on the road. I didn't like it on the road, but it was it, it looked good for the for the day. No one was going against Dallas. It was a big game. Yeah, and, and this is a bigger game. Do you play tougher when you feel like you look tougher? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? Oh, no. you stop that. Do you play tougher? When you feel like you look, I tough. feel like you. Like, that was we, we, like, like when, like when you, when you, when you feel confident in how you look, yeah, you play man, better. But you, sh you should play tough every week. You know, okay. you should. Uh, Whatever you know, color you got on, look good, feel good, feel good, play good. All but that. I feel like the black is like it's like no, a tough it's, look. It's it's a great home game look. That's what I want to say. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, well they will be in all black uniforms this week as Sunday the Commanders are getting set to take on the six and one Minnesota Vikings as they're off their best start since two thousand and nine. Of course, Minnesota is led by a pair of familiar faces as both their quarterback, Kirk Cousins, and head coach, Kevin O'Connell, both spent time here in Washington. Now, despite the strong start to the season, the Vikings have lost their last three games against NFC East opponents, including their Week 2 loss against Philadelphia earlier this year. Now, the Vikings coming off a season-high 34 points in last week's 34-26 victory over the Cardinals, and while Minnesota ranks 10th in the league in scoring offense, it was their first time recording over 30 points this season. Cousins has thrown a touchdown in 37 consecutive games. That's the longest active streak in the mm -hmm. NFL. But... While well, the attention on Cousins, it is easy to forget that Taylor Heineke starting his journey in the NFL with Minnesota. A little full circle for, for myself and Scott Turner. Um, you know, he's, he's the one that brought me into Minnesota and kind of started this whole journey. Um, so it'll be cool to go against those guys. Um, you know, obviously it's not the same coaching staff as when, when I was there uh, with, with Mike Zimmer, but um, it'll be cool. You know, it'll be cool to go against those guys. You know, there's still a couple of players that I know from that team, uh, Harrison Smith, Dalvin Cook. Um, you know, Thielen. I was actually throwing to Thielen when I was in the preseason. I got to throw the digs in Thielen, you know. <laughs> um, so it'll, it'll be cool, you know, full circle to play those guys on Sunday. The combination up there has been really good for them. Uh, the right head coach at the right time for, for Kirk and his career. So I think he's excited about that. Uh, they're both excited about that. They're, they're putting a good product out. They're, they're putting points on the board. They're, they're, they're moving the ball. They're getting explosives. So um, they, they can run it. They can throw it. Uh, you know, the boot game and the play action games, it's, it's legit. They, they, they look for chunks. And I just think they're doing a nice job. You know, Kirk's always been able to make all the throws. I think we have to be really efficient with our possessions. We don't know how many we're going to get, obviously, with their offense over there. And um, also, I think we just got to be better on third down this week, um, just keeping those drives alive capitalizing if our defense is able to make some uh, turnovers happen. Um, so I think, you know, when you're playing a team that can score a lot of points in the defense that makes you kind of work the ball down the field, you just have to be really efficient with your uh, possessions. Time to go inside the matchup presented by FanDuel this fantasy football season. Get more ways to win with FanDuel. So let's go into some of the matchups that I know you're going to be looking forward to uh, this week on the field. And I want to start with Kirk Cousins, uh, mainly because he spent six seasons here. It's his first time coming back. Uh, we haven't seen him since 2017, but both of you caught passes from him. Yeah. Santana, um, what are you seeing from him this season? Very productive. Uh, one of the things that stands out to me the most is they have the right kind of players around them. And the play calling has been exceptionally well. I think one of the things that stands out more than anything that he don't have to get up there and think too much. So he's going out there, he's seeing what he has to do. And whether it's pre snap and read or throughout the course of the play, he's finding the open guy. But Kurt has always been that productive passer. He just had to get around the right system and he's back to something that he's familiar with. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see him back comfortable because, like, we you know, we care about Kirk. We want him to do well, but obviously not this weekend. Yeah. Um, I will say the thing that sticks out to me is he's been much better in the fourth quarter. He's yeah. been much more consistent in terms of making plays when the team needs to make those high leverage situations. He started slow the past couple of games, but finished very, very strong and led his team to victories. And that, I think that uh, shows a nice maturity by him over the last couple of years. And for the most part, he's been taking care of the ball. He has 11 touchdowns, five interceptions. Three of them, though, came against Philly. the Philadelphia right. Eagles mm -hmm. alone. So for the most part, he hasn't been giving you major opportunities. But we know the defensive line is going to be getting all over him in this one, and he's familiar with those guys up there as well. Now, one of his top wide receivers is Justin Jefferson. How is he going to do against the secondary, Logan? I mean, I think Justin Jefferson, to my eye, is one of the most kind of skillful receivers in the NFL. He's mm -hmm. very, very talented at the catch point. He's a, he's a, he plays bigger than he's listed at. I think he's 6'1", 190 pounds. He plays bigger than that. Great physicality. Can line up inside, line up outside. So it's going to be a team effort in terms of aggregating resources to stop him. And I think in those man-to-man -man situations, I think you've got to put our best cover corner on him. And I think that's Benjamin St. Juice. You don't want to do that too, too much because that's a tough matchup. But that's what I would. I think you have to do. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that stands out to me is that he, he's not only just one of those guys that you have to worry about on the outside. He's dominant in the inside. Yeah. So I'm glad that we have that kind of, you know, we have that player that we can probably match up or see him, you know, have that kind of coverage. But we can't let him get, 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 get you know, get wild on us. Because yeah. I've seen him take advantage of teams. Uh, one of the things I want to say on, on the last um, thing you asked me about, we have to take a page out of uh, Philadelphia's book. Mm. They was they played him better than anybody, and it yeah. wasn't because they played great coverage on him. It was because those it was guys. Great rush, fun. great rush. Yeah. It, it, well, I mean, look, if the quarterback doesn't have any time to be able yeah. to throw the ball, then forget it. Uh, right. Jefferson can't do too much on that side. Uh, on the other side, Taylor Heineke, um, he's going to be going up towards a really stout defensive sure. front yeah. as well, Logan. Yeah, I think that you know Zedarius Smith is one of the best defensive ends in the NFL. I think he's tied for the league lead in sacks right now, and it's not like he's rushing from the defensive end. He lines up at nose guard. He lines up at three technique. They find ways to put him in advantageous situations to rush the passer, and he has been excellent in that. That's where he was most productive in Green Bay. When he was in Baltimore, same thing. They're starting to adopt that package, and he has been performing up the top billing, which, yeah. been, which is fun to see as a fan of football, but as a Washington fan, makes you a little nervous. Yeah, Vikes' defense is tied with us in sacks, I believe. We, uh, we have 21, they have 21, and they have 13 takeaways, mm -hmm. which is ninth in the league. So when you see that coming from a defense, um, Heineke has to be very efficient. He has to make sure that he's doing some right. of the things we've seen in the past uh, few weeks. He's been efficient with the ball, but he's also been making the right decision. So if mm -hmm. it's not there, Take what you can with your legs. When it's there, give the guy to the ball in a timely fashion, and he should be okay. Yep. Yeah, they love that he's not afraid to step in the pocket to make the play, but hopefully smartly as well. That's such a thing. Yeah, Probably right. not smartly. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's why I just should stick to my script here. <laughs> in Sunday's win against Indianapolis, the commander's wide receiver, Curtis Samuel, showed his versatility in offense, combining for 76 scrimmage yards on seven touches. His 42 receptions on the year tops in the team, and he's tied with Terry McLaurin for the team lead with 23 first downs. This Sunday against Minnesota, Samuel's going to look to make it three straight weeks with at least 75 combined yards in the game. He caught up with our captain, London Fletcher, after practice. Curtis, after the one and four start, we're, get, we're coming here riding a three game winning streak. How were you guys able to get things turned around this season? Um, we're a tough team. I mean, we understand that we was out there making plays, but it just wasn't enough. You know, I felt like the problem was we just wasn't putting together four quarters of football. Um, I know this past week, you know, I felt like we slacked off a little bit, but um, we picked it up at the end. And, you know, most important is finishing. One guy who didn't slack off and who hasn't been slacking off is you. You know, over the uh, three out of the last four games, you've had at least five catches, five touches, over 60 yards from scrimmage. You lead us in, in receptions, made a couple of huge catches on fourth down in that ball game against the uh, the Colts. What has been the key for you being able to, um, you know, operate in space the way you've operated and, and have the ball in your hands so much? Uh, really just understanding, the, uh, like, the, res the receiver position. You just never understand when the ball is coming to you. You know what I mean? So much stuff got to go on for you to get the ball, you know? So my mindset each and every time is just like, just be prepared, be ready. You know what I'm saying? Go out there when you match up, whenever the ball come your way, just make something happen. Cause you don't know how many times you gonna get the ball. Right. There's been a change at the quarterback position, you know, going to Taylor Heineke over the last two, two ball games. Offense, you mentioned, has had some transition with Taylor under center. What, what, has, the, what has been the change with, with Taylor being under center? Um, I mean, as far as us as receivers, we know we got to go out there and make plays. We know as long as we doing what we got to do, getting open, uh, catching the ball and making big plays, we feel like the offense is going to uh, do a good job. Um, uh, you know, I, I really think uh, us as an offense, I feel like we, we all just playing better. You know, Taylor able to, you know, get out the pocket and make extra things happen. And, um, you know, I feel like we're doing a great job. 
as you as you look at the, uh, the situation with the receivers, you, you got Terry McLaurin. Terry went home, had a big game. How has that playing with Terry kind of opened things up for you in this offense? Um, we know Terry gonna go out there and make plays, make things happen. You know, he done think two back back to back two two great games. You know, uh, doing what doing what he does. You know, every time the ball is in the air, every time he got a chance, he gonna make some big happen. You know, um, teams may start you know try to double. You know what I'm saying? But that's the good thing about our room. We so deep. We got a lot of guys. You know that could come in and make uh, big things happen. We, we got a little bit injuries, but I feel like every guy that steps in is gonna make something happen out there. We got the uh, six and one Minnesota Vikings coming in here. Gonna be a tall task. What what do you think is gonna be the key when when going against this uh, this Vikings defense? Uh, toughness. It's just starting up front. You know, we got to dominate the line of scrimmage. You know, um, we got to protect our uh, protect our quarterback and just make things happen. Man. Just try to put together four quarters of good football. You know, no slacking off, uh, staying on the field, converting third downs, and I feel like that'll help us. Hey, last but not least. We haven't seen you dance in a while, man. Can we expect to see you dancing this uh this Sunday? I gotta get in that end zone, man. <laughs> Trust me. I, I got I got some moves, man. <laughs> I'm just waiting to get in that end zone. That's that's what my point is. Hopefully we'll get you in the end zone this uh this Sunday and see you out there doing your dance moves. Absolutely appreciate it. All right. It is about time we see him with some moves in the end zone. Uh, make sure you do watch Command Center Game Day Live on the official pregame show, The Washington Commanders. We are live on the air starting at 11 a.m. and taking you up to the start of our game against the Vikings. You can watch on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. And then after the game, do not miss Command Center Post Game Live for reaction analysis and interviews with head coach Ron Rivera and the players. You can also find that on YouTube. Take command of your game days. Still to come, after spending six seasons as a member of the Burgundy and Gold, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins finally makes his return to FedEx Field. We go behind enemy lines to see how Minnesota is preparing for Washington. And we have some sad news to share. As former defensive tackle Dave Butts has passed away at the age of 72. Butts, a member of the franchise's Ring of Fame and 90 Greatest List, spent 14 seasons with the Burgundy and Gold, winning two Super Bowls with the franchise. Butts appeared in 203 games for Washington, recording 59 sacks, two interceptions, and six fumble recoveries. Our thoughts are with the Butts' family. Welcome back to Command Center. Over the past two weeks, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins has been impressive with the ball, throwing four touchdown passes and no interceptions. Despite being the franchise's career record holder in 300-yard passing games, Cousins has yet to have one this season. For more in Minnesota, it's time to go behind enemy lines with our senior writer, Zach Selby. Thanks, Julie. And I think some of our fans will know who this guy is we have up next. Uh, he was working with us for a little bit. Is Gabe Henderson. First of all, Gabe, how you been, man? What's going on? Man, I'm good. It's uh, it's, st it's still 70 in Minnesota, even though it snowed a couple of weeks ago here. But I'm, I'm good. I'm good. No complaints. Ready for Sunday. Uh, ready to get back, man. Looking forward to seeing you. Man, I'm happy to see you too. We're definitely ready over here for this game against the Vikings. So let's start off with the obvious. Um, Kirk Cousins coming back to FedEx Field for the first time in his career. Uh, two questions. One, how many times has he been asked about it? And to over the past you know year since we've seen him you know in the burgundy and gold how has he you know improved or what what, do you, what have you thought of his skill set overall in the past few years yeah i think um you may be the first person that's asked him how does it feel coming back no i'm joking he's probably no i'm joking he, he's been asked about <laughs> 30 or 40 times and he he's downplayed it all um mm -hmm. you, you got to think last week patrick peterson faced the arizona cardinals and he was riled up like energy through the roof I think Kirk is going to be the exact opposite. I think Kirk is going to stay cool, calm, and collected, and that's somewhat um, that, that's somewhat how he how he's been his entire career. Outside of the "you like that that that" moniker, he's been pretty you know simple, calm, and uh, next play and forward focus. So uh, Kirk has definitely gotten more comfortable this year. I would say mm -hmm. than years past. I would honestly say this year is the most comfortable. I've seen him since 2017 when Kevin O'Connell and Kirk was in Washington. And I think uh, that familiarity has a lot to do with it, and which is why uh, this Vikings team is off to this 6-1 and one hot start. Yeah, so let's talk about Kevin O'Connell for a little bit. I mean, he was here, you know, as an offensive coordinator for a little bit, and now he's the head coach. You know, what, do you, what have you thought of the way he's been calling this offense? And, you know, how, how, is, how has his presence kind of affected the rest of the Vikings team? I think it's affected it in a positive way. Um, his play calling has evolved as the years, well, I guess as the games have been on. Um, a lot of our, five of our six wins have been by a score or less. And 
a couple of those wins that we've had earlier in the year, I'll just talk about the Detroit Lions win. Uh, Kevin O'Connell had, you know, his play sheet. He had everything he wanted to call uh, up until the last two minutes of the game because his play sheet just wasn't working. So it was like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to just go two minute and just start calling some plays that we've practiced that everybody should know how to figure this thing out. And then we go down and score the game winning touchdown drive. So his play calling has evolved. He's He's got his scripted plays, but at the same time, I think some of these wins have taught him that, hey, it's okay to get off script and uh, just go with what's working. And last week was the, the first game that the Vikings have had that Dalvin Cook has had a 100-yard rushing game, and a lot of that was due to Kevin O'Connell just saying, okay, this is what's working. Let's continue to stick with it. Game day details are delivered by Paisano's, where you get buy one, get one large pizzas on Commander's Game Day and free toppings for extra points on Monday. Order online at paisanospizza.com. The Commanders will take on the NFC North leading Vikings at FedEx Field this Sunday with kickoff scheduled for 1 p.m. Washington has lost their last two meetings with Minnesota. You can watch the game on Fox or you can listen to radio. You can catch Bram Weinstein, London Fletcher and myself on Big 100 or streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Well, last weekend, Terry McLaurin had the opportunity to live out his childhood dream of playing in the stadium that he grew up going to as a fan. Uh, it was pretty surreal for him. Now, we've also had some former Washington players that had the opportunity to play in their hometown team as well. Former tight end Vernon Davis grew up in DMV, and we paired him with current tight end Logan Thomas as he grew up in Lynchburg, Virginia. Both fans of the team, both playing for Washington. This is the latest episode of Commander Code. <laughs> It's hair on his head. Like a nice size, nice. Uh, was it really low? It, it's low, so no. Super low. Not a lot of hair, no. Not a lot of hair. Uh, Does he play offense? Yes. Does he have a beard? Yes. <laughs> Is he a current player? No. Is your guy African American? Yes. All right. So. All right. Same question. Is your guy African American? Yes. That's it. Is your guy an offensive player? No. <laughs> Not an offensive player. <laughs> Is your guy bald? No. Is your guy a defensive back? No. Is your guy Santana Moss? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it? No, I didn't. Oh, I had three left. I was, I was trying to play the odds here. That was a good one. The odds. <laughs> Good old tight end to tight end talk and competition. Hey, make sure, Commander fans, you're at the Vikings game because they are going to be here Sunday. You can get your tickets now for the matchup on November 6 at 1 p.m. Tickets start at just $44. It is our annual Salute to Service game. We will be honoring our military with a service scarf and hat giveaway. Visit commanders.com slash tickets to get yours. Still to come, while it took some late game heroics in Indy, Washington was able to keep their winning streak alive. Now what will be the key to make it four in a row? We share our answer next. Welcome back to Command Center. Washington punter Tress Way has been named NFC Special Teams Player of the Month for October. During the month, Tress recorded 28 punts for an NFC leading 45.1 net yard average. He placed a league high 16 punts inside the 20, including an NFL best six inside the 10 yard line. Congrats to Tress, our MVP. Time now for our keys to winning presented by the Maryland Lottery. Play fast, win fast with fast play games from the Maryland Lottery. The last time Washington earned a win against Minnesota, uh, Kirk Cousins was the quarterback for Washington. So it's going to be the key to getting this one going. Uh, Logan. Yeah, so Julie, I think that one of the biggest things is handling Minnesota's play action pass game. And the reason I think that is, is because they've done a really good job, Kevin O'Connell, of taking some of the decision making out of Kirk's hands. Mm -hmm. They have some stuff where they get up to line of scrimmage and 
O'Connell calls the play from the headset, all these different things. And play action pass makes decisions easy for the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So stress this. Let's take this off the table, stop the run, <laughs> and create pressure in these situations because that's a really effective uh, passing set for them. Oh, well, you know, one of my keys would be move the uh, chains on third Absolutely. down. Our yeah. offense last week was very stagnant in the second half. You know, we went up, what, seven to three and half time. Yeah, yeah. We came out third quarter, didn't get anything accomplished. It wasn't until the last two minutes of that fourth quarter when we found our way to getting 10 points. Yeah. So can't be stagnant this week. You have a you have an offense in, in uh, the, the Vikings offense that can move the ball up and down yeah. and score. So we can't be stagnant. We have to move the chains. Yeah, and th that kind of goes inside with my, my next point. You have to be aggressive early in the game. What I, and it doesn't, don't go crazy, Tana. Mm -hmm. Don't be throwing Del these deep passes going nuts. But to put yourselves in good third down situations, you need to be good on first and second down. Yeah. We don't need to run the ball every single play on first down. We need to find ways to get Heineken in a good position, put this offense in a good position. Because like you said, we're going to need to keep pace with the Minnesota Vikings because mm -hmm. they have been an efficient offense. Maybe not the best offense in the NFL, mm -hmm. but they've been an efficient offense. And especially going against that defense, you need to find ways to make some big plays early. I believe this one right here stands out more than anything that I've ever said. Um, Technique sound on our back end. Oh, okay. I think our cornerbacks are finding themselves in situations where they're panicking a lot. They're, yeah. they're not trusting what they see in front of them. Hey, if you're playing your technique as good as you can and you're in great coverage, don't panic. Don't yeah. go up there to grab the guy because I believe some of these teams are going to start taking advantage and say, hey, whether we get the yards with someone making a play or they give up the yards by you know, penalizing their sales by holding or, yeah. or pass interference. So we have to be technique sound in the back end. And you can't go out there. You can't afford having so much success up front with our rush yeah. and then falling short in the back end. Yeah, and for me, winning the fourth quarter is going to be huge just because you got to make plays in the fourth quarter, and Minnesota's been great doing that this year. Julie, so excited for the game this yeah, week. Yeah, Taylor's good in the fourth quarter, too. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on Command Center. We will see you next time and next week, hopefully with a win.